I first met John professionally, probably in the mid 80s when I was a broadcast journalist with the BBC presenting a radio show called Good Morning Ulster. Uh, and of course the troubles were at their height uh, and politicians were coming in and out of the studio bemoaning the fact that Northern Ireland was a horribly divided society uh, and basically throwing mud at the, uh, the other community, except for John. Uh, and John came in with this alternative, really positive view of Northern Ireland, that we were diverse uh, and difference is at the heart of humanity. He was both really refreshing uh, and incredibly hopeful. Uh, and that's what got me deeply interested in John Hume. And of course, he, he challenged all the Sibyllists. For example, everybody uh, was focused on the land border on the island of Ireland, except for John Hume, who was fixated with the borders in people's minds. And of course, that, I think, was the genesis of, of the framework which he came up with, which became the three-stranded approach, which is at the heart of the 1998 Belfast Good Friday Agreement. John had um, a credo, I believe, which was people first, party second, individual third. And believe me, as a politician, that's a very hard philosophy to live out in your day-to-day -day life because I need votes to keep my job. My party needs votes to stay in power or to gain more power. And so to put those into a secondary position behind the interests of the people, can be really challenging. And remember, we were talking about trying to end 30 years of violence. Uh, and John did put the people first. Uh, otherwise, he could not have engaged in those Hume Adams talks, because remember that the two men and the two parties were competing against each other for votes within the nationalist community. Uh, but I was privileged uh, to, to be there in New York on the 1st of February, 1994 when Jerry Adams made his debut on American soil in that uh, hotbed of American socialism, the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in Park Avenue. But it was a conference run by the National Committee on American Foreign Policy. And they wanted to get the leaders of the five parties together. Uh, and the problem was Adams was not allowed into America. Uh, and so there was a lot of lobbying uh, for President Clinton to grant him a visa, which he did eventually limited by geography and time. New York for 48 hours. John Hume eventually came round to lobby for Jerry Adams. And I covered that uh, for Ulster Television. And when it was over, I saw Adams standing in the reception of the Grand Ballroom, surrounded by just about 40 television cameras, like rings of an onion. And then I looked in the corner, and I think on the staircase, smoking a cigarette on his own, watching it, was John Hume. And you've got to remember that John had spent 25 to 30 years tirelessly flying backwards and forwards to Washington, cultivating interest and concern on Capitol Hill and the White House into Northern Ireland. And he had more or less handed it over. Here's the new kid on the block. The whole focus was on who is Gerry Adams and what does he think? Uh, and that did damage the SDLP. And it did damage John, I think, as an individual. Uh, certainly politics had a great toll on his health, but it was the right thing to do for the people. So I do consider it to be one of the most remarkable acts of leadership I have ever seen. I think a lot of people look on, on Pat and indeed at Daphne Trimble uh, as sort of like the little lady in the background in that kind of horribly patronising way. Uh, but actually they were much more significant than that. And indeed, they were public figures in their own right. And I remember after 98 and the agreement, uh, the government for the first time decided they would do something concrete uh, for the needs of the victims and survivors of the Troubles, who had lost so many opportunities in employment and education and health and housing and all the rest. So they set up a body called the Northern Ireland Memorial Fund, uh, and Pat and Daphne became the two heads of that organization. Uh, and I remember they went out to the United States and I think within an hour of landing at JFK, they were on their feet uh, on a dais fundraising uh, for the Memorial Fund. So I, I don't think we should forget that, that the work that, that Pat and Daphne did extended well beyond supporting their husbands.
Will we ever see the like of John Hume again? I, I sincerely hope so, and I, I have to say, for, for my money, that is at the core of the business of the John and Pat Hume Foundation.